Welcome back to It Resolves, where we play a new deck every single day. Today's deck is Mardu Tokens. What is going on, everybody? And welcome back to another standard gameplay video. I hope you guys are doing well. I am really excited for today's deck. This is Mardu Tokens, kind of somewhat similar, I should say, to the mono white list that we played last week, which was very token based. This is a little bit more flexible, a little bit more uh, removal heavy, recursion heavy, things like that. And I really think that is a testament to how good the deck can be. So we're going to talk about that as we go through. But first and foremost, I do have to thank Sonio for putting this deck together. Sonio, my man, thank you so much. If you don't know who Sonio is, go check him out. I will link him down below. And thank you again for sharing this over on Aetherhub. But let's talk about the deck. So uh, very straightforward in terms of the token creation. So uh, some of the usual suspects that we would expect to see. We've got Wedding Announcement. Uh, we do have Fable of the Mirror Breaker, which can, of course, create the Tutu and then copy some of our stuff. Uh, we do have the Wandering Emperor as our only Planeswalker, but she, of course, can create a 2-2 Samurai uh, with Vigilance, which is quite nice for this deck. Uh, Stenzia Uprising is a card that uh, we really haven't seen for a while, but a bit of a blast from the past. A, a really good card, in my opinion. At the beginning of your instep, you create a 1-1. Uh, then if you have exactly 13 permanents, you can actually sacrifice Stenzia Uprising to deal 7 damage to any target. Generally, I like to just keep this on the field, but this offers a win condition if your opponent happens to be at 7 or less life. So it's actually a pretty good card for the deck. Uh, we do have Burn Down the House, which acts as a sweeper, but also a token creator, uh, as well as Lorehold Command, which can obviously spit out a 3-2 creature or do an, any number of other things, including draw some card, deal some damage, give indestructible, all kinds of stuff. Uh, and then a key card for the deck is, of course, Rabble Rousing. This is one of the big payoffs. You get to double up on your tokens that are attacking, which is great. Uh, and then, of course, hopefully hide away something really powerful that you get to then play for free later on. Uh, we do, of course, have a Miria's Call here at the top end, giving indestructible to non-angel creatures and then spitting out to 4-4 four, four angels, which is awesome. Uh, now, we did talk about some of the recursion factors of this list. We do have two Reconstruct History, a card that doesn't always get played. Uh, obviously, we've only got two of them, but uh, it is a really nice way to replenish your hand if you find the need to. So it's also a way to bring back a lot of things like the Stenzia Uprising if you happen to sacrifice it, uh, or or just, you know, a good planeswalker like the Wandering Emperor or removal spells, whatever you happen to need. Uh, speaking of removal spells, we do have a handful here. We've got the Igneous Inspiration, which gives us the uh, opportunity to play cards in the sideboard. We do have Vanishing Verse, of course, the Meat Hook Massacre, which is going to be able to kill a bunch of stuff. We can actually win off of this if we've got enough tokens. Uh, and then the one drop slot is just a wealth of uh, singleton removal spells, uh, which makes sense because we do have uh, Reconstruct History, so we want to be able to play different spells that we can then, of course, pull back. Uh, now, the only other tech that I wanted to mention is the Reckoner Bankbuster and the Unlicensed Hearse, giving us a little bit of card draw and a little bit of exile from the graveyard. This can also just be a really good way to win the game because it's only a crew cost of two and it can, it can really grow very quickly. So a, a very powerful card for sure. Uh, I'm trying to think if I missed anything else. I don't think so. Sonia did a really good job of teching this deck out. So we're going to have some fun with it today, guys. Hopefully get some wins. Let's jump right in. All right, guys, and here we are for game number one. How do we feel about this hand? It's a bit of an interesting one. Um, if we get any other land, we're fine-ish. Uh, but we are going to have to make some decisions. I'm going to try it. Not sold on this by any means, but we're going to do the best we can. Wow, that was a fun little animation. I enjoyed that. Um, okay, let's go ahead and throw this out there, uh, and we'll just pass. Um, the Vanishing Verse could be very handy, although I'm assuming this is going to be Esper Control, which is going to be a little bit tricky. Portable Hole can very easily take care of that, though, which is nice. Oh, good. Okay. That's actually really helpful. So let's do this. Let's go ahead and Portable Hole. We'll just go ahead and get the Aspirant off the field. We just don't have to worry about it. Fantastic. Uh, next turn, we do either have Vanishing Verse or the Wedding Announcement. So we actually have some options here, uh, depending on what we'd like to do. We do have the Unlicensed Hearse as well. Okay. Um, let's make sure we're doing things properly. I think we'll go for the black here. Um, hmm. 
Rafine is a tricky one because I don't really want to leave Rafine on the battlefield. I'm trying to think what the best option is. So we can do this, uh, sacrificing two of the black cards in our hand and then paying the one. So that's a three for one. I don't really love that. Um, I think instead for now, I'm just gonna go wedding announcement. I'm not sure that this is the right call. I'll just be honest. Uh, but I, I feel like three for wanting a Rafine is not necessarily a great idea. I think I'd rather save that and we'll see what we can do afterwards. Um, I do like the wedding announcement because it just gives us some long-term value, which is obviously really good. Also, check out my bug. It says I like her butt. It's probably reversed for you guys. My wife and I got uh, matching mugs because we're cute as crap. And... Um, Mine says I like her butt, hers says I like his beard, which is awkward if I ever shave. Uh, not the plan. Alright, so, they're going to attack, which, obviously, uh, and they did get rid of the portable hole, which is interesting. Kind of a interesting, uh, interesting way of doing it. Okay, so, we can do a couple things. We can unlicensed hearse plus vanishing verse. Alternatively, we can march the aspirant. And then, uh, unlicensed hearse. Um, I think the play is gonna be to do this. Let's go ahead and drop the hearse. Um, let's attack. I'm gonna wait on the hearse, uh, until the end of their turn, most likely. Um, the thing about the hearse is we can activate it at instant speed, so it really doesn't matter if we wait right now. We can just do it at the end of their turn and hopefully hit some more pressing spells for sure. Um, really don't love the Rafine attacking in, but I don't know that we've got much of a choice here. Yep. Uh, potentially, though, this does open up the opportunity for us to attack in uh, and draw some extra cards here, which is good. So I will happily take that. Uh, sure. Taking four, don't love that. Um, I'm hoping they play something, but it looks like they're not, which is a little scary. Uh, let's go ahead and take these two, I suppose. It doesn't really matter, I don't think, but uh, we can go ahead and get some out of the graveyard here. All right, kind of getting punished for the vanishing verses here a little bit, just because uh, unfortunately we don't have, you know, a better option. Um, so they can activate this, but I think it's actually okay. Um, I'm gonna drop the second wedding announcement. I guess we could have saved up, uh, which we still might be able to do, but... Alright. Let's attack in. We can probably march the... the hive, if we needed to. I just wanted to attack with two so we could actually get two draw cards, uh, off of the wedding announcement here. Yes, so we knew that was going to happen. We could just kill the Hive. Which I'm actually not opposed to. I mean, we kind of have to do it for four. I hate doing this, but I think this is actually nice for us because we're going to gain... A decent bit of life we're gonna deal some damage and get a land slash creature off the field so i feel like this is okay uh gaining that life is good and then we of course get to draw two cards back so we we're not losing quite as many as it may seem uh stentia uprising is kind of nice though we don't have the double red that's the problem um okay interesting we did get a land which is helpful ah sorry had to had to sip on my coffee guys it's a little bit early all right uh sure we did sacrifice quite a bit to do that attack but um again i think it could potentially be worth it we also can start crewing the unlicensed hearse here which is actually a big move because it obviously scales up as we go let's let them connive first see what they discard Okay. Go ahead and pass. Unfortunately, taking six. That's a lot of damage. Um, let's get the two spells out uh, and see what we can draw. Meat hook, huh? Okay, well, we definitely played that. 
Do we think they have a Vanishing Verse? Probably, right? I'm gonna crew. We're gonna do it. Let's attack. Um, chances are they won't block with the Aspirant. Yeah. And then we can go ahead and hit him for one here just to get this off the field. And then we actually draw two more cards, so that's kind of nice. Oh no, one card, excuse me. One of the wedding announcements flipped. I forgot about that. All right, that's fine. Uh, Lore Hold Command is actually pretty reasonable. There might be a situation where we can kind of manufacture a win out of that. You have to think it represents three damage plus however many creatures we have add that many. Um, although it looks like they're gonna be able to kill one of them if they want. Um, it does have to be a creature, which is kind of nice, so they can't just kill the unlicensed hearse, so that's helpful. Okay, they're going to create the 2-2, two -two, that's fine. Honestly, just glad they didn't gain much life. <laughs> that could have been really bad. Um, Alright. A discard a Brutal Cathar, that's a pretty solid play. I'm almost kind of surprised they didn't go for that instead of the Wandering Ember, to be kind of honest. Um, Alright, so we do have Lorehold Command available. Okay, so what's going to be the play? Um, we're dead next turn, so we do have to manufacture a win this turn. Uh, we can... Drop that. That's some damage, but not enough, I don't think. So let's see, this is going to be... A 5-5 five, five because of these. So 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Um, we're going to try. I don't, it's probably not going to be enough here. Um, all right, so let's attack. We'll just have to send it here. Depending on if they block or not, we actually can win. Okay, well, that changes it. Um, hmm. I think we just lost, uh, which is fine. I wish this had flying. That would be so helpful. Uh, let's just go ahead and kill this. We'll draw or gain the life. Okay. Um, okay, I mean, maybe. <laughs> there might be a world where we can get the win. <laughs> uh, we're at nine. They can connive for one. So if they have like a Luminarch Aspirant plus a non-land card, I suppose they could win that way. If they can just deal a couple extra damage, they can win. This is just a connive for one though. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Okay, Tenacious Underdog. That puts us at one. <laughs> do we... Do we get the win? <laughs> is, the, is the question. Can they deal one? Um, man, the meat hook really saved us there. Maybe? This is a really good game. Uh, I will say, I've practiced with this deck just a couple times. Oh, no. Okay. Yeah. Um, this though evens out, doesn't it? Yeah, so this evens out. They're up to eight again though. Ugh, okay. Okay, um, hmm. <laughs> uh, so we can make X equal three. But then they just have Tenacious Underdog, right? So we have to do this. Uh, I'm not seeing a way we can get out of this, um, unfortunately. So the reason we're gonna have a problem here, um, we can exile this to actually deal with the Rafine, but that doesn't solve our problem. 
Um, so as an example, if we do this, yes, auto pay, that doesn't matter. We don't have enough mana to do everything. Uh, so we can auto pay here, which seems fine, but they just have Tenacious Underdog. Um, oh no, wait, I'm so dumb. We can just exile this. All right, <laughs> theoretically, I'm so stupid. It took me a minute for that one. All right, maybe. Brutal Cathar is fine. Uh, that does not solve their problem. Land is not great. Uh, let's go ahead and drop our Stenzia Uprising. So this is going to drop a 3-3. Uh, do we want to sacrifice the Uprising? Ugh. Do we? I'm actually going to say yes. Um, I'm just going to deal 7 here. I don't think that's correct, but we're going to do it. I think it's actually to kill the Brutal Cathar. Uh, my thing is, if they just have a removal spell, like, that's a bit of a problem for us. Although, I guess we do have the unlicensed hearse that we can throw out, though. Alright. Here's to hoping. Uh, yeah. That's good. Interesting. That's fine. Uh, because we do have the unlicensed hearse, so I hope they attack. Right? This has been such a real, just a very solid game. Let's go ahead and exile a couple. Might as well. All right, so that's a dead brutal Cathar. The meat hooks cancel each other out. Oh, it's down to their last card in hand. Uh, and we got nothing. <laughs> oh. Uh, yeah, that could be really good. Target creature or planeswalker. Um, let's go ahead and reconstruct history. Submit zero. We get that. Which instant do we want? Is the question. I think it's probably March. Okay, so this is only. I mean, it's not a lot, but it's something. Okay. I'm just attacking with the token. Yes! Oh my gosh, guys. What a game. Sonio, we did it, my friend. That was amazing. We did get the win. I really thought we had lost it at that point, but that was amazing. Let's jump into a game two. The brand new Reanimator Proxy Pack is now available through the end of July. If you'd like to pick up this month's amazing Proxy Pack, please visit patreon.com slash it resolves for details. All right, guys, here we are for game number two. Depending on how long this game goes, we may only get two in. Uh, that being said, I don't think we can keep this hand. We've got too many red cards and no red mana, so I just think it's it's worth it to throw this one back. Um, I do like this one, though. I think we actually throw the Reconstruct History back. This is very removal heavy, obviously, um, but I think that's actually okay. Hmm, that's a bit of a catch-22 because I do want to play this, but that leaves Vanishing Burst unavailable turn two. I still think we go for it. I think that's fine. Uh, we do have the double red here, which is really clutch for us. Uh, we need double white and double black. So one thing to note about this deck is there are a lot of double colors where, you know, Meat Hook Massacre is double black. You got Wandering Emperor, which is double white. You've got Stenzia and Burn Down the House, which are both double red. So you've got a lot of... Um, mana constrictions or constraints that you do need to meet throughout the game. So just something to think about as you are going through. Make sure that you're focusing on your colors, what you're playing, uh, uh, in particular with the pathway lands. You want to make sure that you've got the double of everything, if you can help it. Uh, and let's see what the opponent's doing. The Shank Show is uh, shanking. All right, cool. Um, let's just go ahead and play this out. That does leave open the march if we so choose. Um, albeit it's not an ideal card to play this early in the game, I would say. Um, I do kind of hope they're an aggro focus deck because, uh, with the burn down the house in particular, we could actually just kind of get them. Um, but it looks like they are going to be an is it, uh, style deck, which 
could very well be a problem. It could also be the Jeskai Hinata deck, um, although it looks like that's probably not the case. Seeing that they do have the Jawari Disruption, we'll go ahead and do it like this so we have the one to pay for it. They may have a solution for it or not, but we're going to at least try. Looks like they don't. Uh, so far, pretty unexciting game. <laughs> uh, there is the expressive iteration. Very good. Very, very good. Uh, also, guys, tomorrow we have a Double Masters booster box opening. I am super, super stoked for it. We've already got it recorded. It's already up and scheduled. Uh, Grand Slam sponsored that one. If you guys don't know who Grand Slam is, they are the local game store that really does a great job of supporting us. We can't say thank you enough to them. Uh, because truthfully, without them, we wouldn't be able to do a lot of the openings that we do. Uh, and so genuinely, I just want to say, Grand Slam, thank you so much for making what we do a possibility. Uh, but on top of that, if you guys are interested in Double Masters 2022, we got a booster box opening, and I'm so stoked for it. Uh, we got some really good pulls in it as well. Um, not all the cards I was hoping for, but we definitely got some, and I'm really stoked about that. I'd like to do more. We did also... Oh, it's Grixis. We did also talk about doing a box break. Uh, if, if that's something you guys are interested in doing, signing up for all that kind of stuff, let me know, because I would love to do that kind of thing. Uh, I think it'd be an absolute blast, and it'd be a great way to hopefully get some you know, engagement on the channel, uh, which would be really sick. So just let me know what you guys think. Uh, weirdly, I'm going to go for this. Um, I don't know that this is good. Um, okay, they're just going to counter it. That's fine. Disdainful Stroke is annoying. It's not the end of the world. Um, we could have flash sp played that at flash speed, but I think we kind of want to finish this game as quickly as we can. Uh, and so my thought is let's let's go ahead and get as much as we can out of here now um, Yeah, that's fine. I mean it sucks, but it's fine. We at least get a little treasure token off of the goblin So our mana is looking great uh, at least for the time being um, All right, so I'm assuming reanimator just a guess uh, I kind of hope they just go for it so we can vanishing verse the uh, the hole breaker horror and then we just don't have to worry about it. Okay. We also are building up enough mana where we actually can just, you know, use one of our marches to get rid of it, which both exile. So, I mean, do they both exile? No, I'm sorry. They do not both exile. The white exiles. The black does not, though it does gain quite a bit of life. All right. Meat hook, not a great draw. Uh, we could burn down the house for three. Um... And truthfully, I'm actually going to go for it. The only reason I'm doing this is because I don't think we're going to hit things for five on the opponent's side. And they obviously have a crap load of counter spells, so let's burn them out now. Got one mana available. We now have three. So this does open up the Vanishing Verse if they happen to go for the Hallbreaker Horror. Not that we already had it, but just makes it a little bit easier. All right. Interesting. Okay. So I assume this is reanimator. Um, sure. That's fine. Here's their hand. She's a non-land card from it. Okay. Uh, I think that's fine. There's not much we can really do about this. They're all pretty heavy removal spells, so I assume they just go for like Vanishing Verse because it's probably the most efficient. Um, that's fine. No, it's Meat Hook, wow. Okay, did not see that coming. I kind of thought they would go for the uh, the Vanishing Verse, just because it does get rid of the Hullbreaker Horror, which I assume they go for at some point here. Um, I have seen this deck kind of wandering <laughs> around recently. <laughs> All the jokes. Um, I have seen it kind of hitting around, though. It's interesting. All right, I'm going to go for... I'm just going to do it for one, submit zero, and just see if this actually hits or not. I just need to keep the pressure up, so that's why I'm doing this. It's not a great play, I know, but this is what we got. Um, easy attack in, deal two, 
And yeah, I think I just go for the Fable. If they have a counter spell, they have a counter spell, but this gives us another 2 2, which is nice because, again, we do need to keep the pressure up. We really haven't gotten a ton of pressure heavy cards, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. Um, we really just have to hope they don't have the reanimator spell. The fact that off of the Wandering Mind, they revealed a discard spell and not a reanimator spell leads me to believe one of two things. One, they may just have the reanimator spell, which is terrifying. Or two, they just whiffed and didn't find it. Uh, either way, I mean, one way is definitely better than the other, but uh, we might be able to figure it out either way. So we'll, we'll see what we can do. Um, okay. I'm not gonna exile this. I'm just gonna let it be for now. Another one, okay. Um, I think we decline. I think we just go for this. This is not necessary. This is overly aggressive, potentially, um, but we're gonna try for it. I'm just gonna deal as much as I can, as quickly as I can. We also wanna flood the board with stuff. Uh, because if they do have a Hullbreaker Horror, they're going to be able to um, bounce a bunch of stuff. And so just adding stuff to the board for them to, to deal with is actually pretty important. Um, and I think we just have to leave up the Vanishing Verse or the March. I don't think we go for the other Fable. I don't think it would help that much in this case anyway. Yeah, that's fine. <clears throat> okay. Uh, we have to hope they don't hit the reanimator spell, because I think they would have gone for it by now. I would hope. Uh, this is crew three, so this can't crew it. A surge, huh? Okay. That's fine. They've got three mana available. That's not necessarily great. Uh, one of them is probably just that. Um... Confirm zero. Let's go ahead and just march this. Uh, this just means they don't necessarily have good blocks. Um, although I guess we could have vanishing burst that and gone for this. Um, no, that's fine. We're gonna leave the vanishing burst though because I don't want to lose to a silly thing. Uh, let's make sure we've got the double black. Um, okay, I mean, I think we just go for the attack. They can kill one thing and block another, uh, at the very least, so we'll see. Um, yep, kind of assumed they would go for that one, that's fine. All right, we did it. That's another win, guys. We are up on the 30 minute mark or at least getting close to it. So we're gonna have to cut it here, but technically that's an undefeated run with Sonio's list. Thank you so much, Sonio. Let's wrap this one up. All right, guys, so Mardu tokens, how do we feel about it? I love it. Uh, first, and, uh, first and foremost, Sonio, thank you so much, my friend. Again, you shared this over on Aetherhub. I really do appreciate it. Guys, check Sonio out. I will link him down below. Uh, this deck, feels like a much more well-rounded version of the mono white tokens list that we played uh, the other week. Now that one was much more focused on the anthem effects. You can tell that just from the card choices, of course, but this one has the recursion. It has the removal to deal with a lot of other decks in the format right now. And those in inclusions of reconstruct history, is such a good call. Uh, just being able to bring stuff back like that is really important, uh, especially in a deck with Stenzia Uprising where you might want to sacrifice it just to deal seven. Uh, all in all, phenomenal. Thank you so much, Sonio. An undefeated run. I know it was only two games, but uh, I mean, there were two very good games in my opinion. So I'm very happy with this one. I do appreciate everybody watching. Thank you guys so much. If you would like to see more, make sure you like, subscribe, and comment down below. We would really appreciate it. But with that being said, thank you guys so much. Stay tuned for the Double Masters 2022 Draft Booster Box opening brought to you by Grand Slam tomorrow. And our guest slot, we have Symphonier's Gaming. If you guys are interested, he's going to be an awesome one for you guys to watch. So thank you guys so much. I'll see you again tomorrow.